Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my co-host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you uh, introduce today's guest, or even better yet, not today's guest, but uh, what we will be talking about today. Yeah, it's uh, it's cold email season, apparently, in my inbox particularly. I don't know if you feel the same, but it seems to be getting a lot more. And what I'm noticing about some of them is the trigger events are getting a bit more interesting. So I thought, let's sit down and um, compare some ones that we use, some ones that we like, some ones we don't, and some different ones. So I think a lot of people do the same stuff. And it's a little bit kind of samey over and over and over again. So what do you normally get out of interest? What, what kind of cold emails? What kind of trigger events are people using when they email you? So for instance, I get a lot of um, just referencing my job which isn't really a trigger event, or they say the congrats on your one year work anniversary or something like that in, in emails. Or uh, sometimes I get um, things like um, your team is growing. It, it sort of is, I guess, but like they think that we're hiring. So that's a, that's a trigger event, if you know what I mean, things like that. Yeah. So the, the trigger events I get, I usually get um, someone talking about my, the acquisition. So I'll say, hey, I noticed AutoClose was getting acquired, or I'll get somebody trying to um, tell me that they they just raised a Series A or a seed round. They would try and do something around um, something they might have seen on like Crunchbase or one of the other ones. But those are the ones that I've been getting lately. Um, people always try and it's it's funny because it says AutoClose a vanilla soft company on LinkedIn, but I still get people thinking that AutoClose is looking to get acquired. And we were never looking to get acquired. So it's a very interesting signal that they use, um, I guess, to see that we were a startup and, and that we were we were in the midst of uh, an acquisition. Okay. So you don't get a big variety, but I guess if we were maybe a bigger team and we were hiring more or there's funding rounds and those things, that would probably be something that we get. So what about our team? What do we use? What, what, so what, what do you mean? Like what we use? Yeah, so when, when our team's reaching out, do we say stuff like funding? Do we say you're hiring? Do we say a new job? Do we say LinkedIn no. posts? Do we, what, what do we use? So we'll, you, we'll sometimes use LinkedIn posts, but we, we, we don't really talk about funding because, you know, obviously we haven't, we haven't raised money as a company. Um, but more or less when we're sending out emails, our signal is all about, you know, what they have done. If they've, if they've attended a webinar, we'll use that as a signal. If they've come to our website or we figure something out like that, we'll – we we'll use that as a signal, but anything external like raising money. Uh, we did have some when we did, you know, hire a new VP of marketing. We did a lot of content around the new VP of marketing. Um, but I feel like that's more of a generic. I, I would say our newsletter, our newsletter that we send out um, specifically in the higher ed is, is more of what's going on in the higher ed vertical. Uh, so that it, there, there are some buyer signals in there, but the, um, the ones that I see that people are copying those signals through like Crunchbase, Owler, um, all those other tools. Um, we don't see, I don't see as much within our team as I know a lot of other companies do. Yeah. Um, I, I can see it's, it's the market dictating that a little bit. I think like who we're selling to. So tell me about someone's that you like, and I'll give you one that I think is quite good. This is generally for the slightly bigger companies and maybe a little bit more in the tech market. So, Take that with a pinch of salt. On Sales Navigator, the wonderful place that that is where you can find all sorts of things, I like to look at the account and you can pick by function, function meaning like department or team. You can say marketing team or finance or legal or sales or whatever. And you can say the team is within five to 20 people or whatever number, but you can also say a percentage growth in the last year or six months or quarter or whatever. So that's quite interesting. If you can pick the very high growth ones, meaning... There are new people that LinkedIn knows say that they work in that company and they are sales titles. That's really good because that's that's sort of LinkedIn's own strength. It you're a profile on there and you say you work there, so it can tell you that very, very reliably. I don't really like the revenue count on that because it's a little bit ambiguous. I'm not sure how they know that, but anything about the departmental headcount size, I think is super strong for that. And you can always then say, Sean, your sales team has decreased by X percent or it's increasing year on year by X percent. Maybe if that continues, something related to what you do. That's one that I really like. Yeah, so I, I do like the, I like the LinkedIn alerts because I like to see if a company does grow or for example, you know, they hire more salespeople, it's another 
way for us to reach out. But one of the buyer signals I like um, is I like to see um, when people change organizations. And the reason why is I find that if somebody was a, a client of, for example, Vanilla Soft or AutoClose, and they moved organizations, to me, when somebody, especially I would say VP or higher, gets moved into a new role or director and higher gets moved into a new role, they want to you know, put their foot in and make a change. They want to do something. And I think it's a good opportunity to reach out because maybe it's a change in tech, maybe it's a change in people, maybe a change in the way they're doing things. Maybe they're focusing on, on email and now they want to focus like on dialing. Um, so I like to see when people change organizations because when you can find them and, and be one of the first people to reach out to them, congratulate them on a the new position, you know, be there for them to support them if they need anything, and then also get somehow introduced your tool. Um, I think it's a great in because I know from first previous experience and a lot of my friends that are, are you know, when they change jobs, the first thing they look to do is either change the tech stack or change the personnel. And if those are one of the two things you're going to be doing, um, what better way as a, uh, to prospect to reach out to them proactively and try and get in their inbox um, and use that as a signal that, you know, maybe this can be a, a potential good client. Now, as you get bigger, that gets a bit more complicated, doesn't it? You might, um, let's say you're a fairly new rep in a big company with a, a long history. You may not have dealt with the vast majority of the customers. So you're less likely to get through unless you were the rep who helped sell them. And then there's a far better relationship. They know the name potentially. Um, I, I could tell you the name of several reps that we bought stuff from. And if they reached out to me again, I would know it's them, even at a different company. But how different can you do that when it's not that case? Because that, that is quite different, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, the, the, you can still use introductions. I mean, so at that point, you can still get an introduction from somebody that was the account manager for that person. Um but typically, if you have them on LinkedIn as a connection and you, you probably are the one that actually sold to them or were involved in the sales process with them. So if that LinkedIn alert comes on and says, hey, Ollie is now VP of marketing at ABC, um, I would reach out to Ollie just because I would be like, oh, hey, we work together at blah, blah, blah. Or you were a client when uh, I was working at here. Uh, I'd like to reach out. I see you're in a new position. Um you know, talk about the position, talk about the industry, talk about, you know, positive stuff. And then obviously once you build that rapport and build that relationship, go with the pitch to try and get the business. But I think that it's a good opportunity because as I said, I think the most important thing people are going to try and do is set their foot in the sand and make a difference. And and, and what a better way to do it by reaching out to them proactively. Cool. Okay. Good stuff. There's uh, there's one more sales navigator one I wanted to share that um, I'll confess this isn't mine. But, uh, but I think this is cool. And we talked about this uh, this week as well. So in Sales Navigator, I believe I got this from Morgan Ingram, so props to him. But if you can, I think it's in the lead filters, I think. And they've changed the name for it. I think it's in the spotlight settings. Yeah. Don't know why, don't know what that means, but whatever. You can find people who follow your LinkedIn company page. So for instance, we looked at who follows our LinkedIn company page that is in the right market, the right persona for us. There's quite a lot, actually. Think of it as like, you wouldn't go and prospect to your opted in email marketing list, would you? Probably not. But these people are like one slight notch above that. And yeah. they know who you are and they're kind of interested. Plus, not that many people do follow companies on LinkedIn anymore. So it's kind of a good thing if they do that. Or you can, I believe, do it for creators, which is like, I think my account is on creator mode, whatever that means. But you can say people who follow Oli or people who follow Sean, show me them as well. So you could pick the not Grant Cardone's, hopefully, but if you want to pick that person, you can pick who follows them is of that same thing. You know, maybe, maybe if you went to, uh, you, they, they follow Sandler training, for example, if you, if you did Sandler and you want to use the reference of the buyer persona also having done Sandler as well, that's, that's like a version of that, but that's one I don't think too many people know. Yeah, that was interesting. I think you showed, uh, you showed our team uh, a few days ago, actually with the, the spotlight. That was an interesting one. Now, with buyer signals, I mean, what about if you're, you know, you're publishing good content out on LinkedIn and you get some comments? You get some comments on your LinkedIn on a specific title, a specific challenge that you see facing. So, say you discuss a challenge um, that you see in sales, and you get replies from people saying, "Yeah," I, and, and they start, "I agree," "I disagree." I have a feeling if they've read that post and they've read that challenge that you see in salespeople they might have that exact same challenge at their organization. Now, if your company is the one that can fix that challenge, I would say I would definitely be reaching out to that person ASAP because 
no one's going to spend time and build a put a comment on if they don't resonate with that what you wrote. Um, so I think that's one thing that people don't use. But the spotlight one was a very interesting one. Um, now you would have to have the sales navigator license to have that, right? Right, Ollie? Yeah, I uh, don't think you can do that for free. I know in free, but you'll run out of um. They they limit how much you can see. Sort of, you can't look at thousands of people in a row. You can do the um, look at who follows a certain creator, I think, but I don't think you can do the company page one. I believe might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. So also, you know, when we talk about like triggers, you know, the different triggers, you know, there's obviously there's many different triggers, you know, that that companies post. They they funding rounds, mergers, acquisitions. Um, if someone is a C level new VP. You know, lately, one we've been seeing is company layoffs and restructuring personnel. Which one do you typically, A, read or B, resonate or try and do something with? Or is it like, I know me personally, you know, with all everything going on in the tech world, I've been really looking at tech layoffs. Um, I've been looking at all the big companies and what they're doing. So that's one that's really triggered me. But which ones really trigger you uh, lately? I I try and go away from the really general ones. Like for a while, the funding, maybe in 2020, everybody got funded every day. It was just exhausting. So um, that was that was the vast majority of what happened. Loads of M&A. Um, and if you're going to be a rep who's going to reach out using that, you've got to do it better or quicker or maybe both to get through because everyone's going to hammer you. It's almost like if you become a funded company, everyone wants you. So that that's part of it. I try and steer away from them just because it's like the first and obvious option isn't always the best. Potentially, it might be, but it may not be. So I look at um, any uh, for sales navigator. It's company mentioned in the news, which just means um, PR worthy things. It doesn't have to be a really big deal, but they might have um, a CEO got interviewed, something yeah. like that, and it doesn't really mean a lot. But CEO being interviewed, well, that's a lot of content. From someone who you're reaching out to his boss. Excellent stuff to relay back in an email, isn't it? So that stuff I look for a bit more often. And oftentimes you just see like the company page is sharing their most recent something. That's a trigger event. They pub they published the thing about whatever they published it about. So that that stuff often tells you a far wider breadth of things that you can mention rather than just the same sort of funding. New job, new office, but like the same thing over and over and over again. There's validity in it, but that's that's sort of my personal style. I like to try and be a little bit different. And you know, for me, I, I love I've always been into like, you know, mergers and acquisitions and stuff. So I've recently really started to like uh two things. One, Owlet. Um Owlet, sorry. Owler. Uh I'm thinking the Owlet, it's the it's a baby camera. So you can, with new children, Owlet's the baby camera, Owler. Um, but I do like the uh, when it says company's been acquired by something in the subject line. I like to really dig into who was acquired, but more in my head, I'm like, why? Like, yeah. why is, you know, indie hacker, sales hacker, and these communities getting acquired? What's the trend there? Why is Microsoft and NVIDIA acquiring AI companies? So we're, we're almost like, okay, the acquisition is one thing. But what is the reason why they're acquiring those companies and where are they going with it? So trying to figure out what these companies' short and long-term plans are is really what I really try and dissect um, through it. But, you know, one other thing I've also um, been really into is um, not really company newsletters, but more industry newsletters, stuff about the industry, what's going on in the industry. Um, and one person that does it really good is uh, Michael Levy. Um, so shout out, he does a lot of stuff around sales engagement and he basically writes articles on, you know, the earnings. If they're a publicly traded company, get the earnings privately. You can find out what they're doing, what acquisitions they're doing, who's raising money. Cause my whole thing is, I don't, I like to read the headline, but my whole thing is what is the why? Why are companies raising money now? Why are they laying off? What are they trying to do? Oh, they're trying to increase their revenue. They're trying to increase profitability. You know, if that's the trend of these big companies, then you know, obviously the smaller companies follow. So, I always like to look for the why. Is that for your personal just brain and brain stimulation, or is that for another reason? Because I I also find that, but I find that more interesting for my understanding of how this all works. Anytime that you see like a huge funding round, 
it's not necessarily like it's rip roaring success. I, I read um the hard thing about hard things by Ben Horowitz. I think mm-hmm. they they like went on the stock exchange to survive, which to me was like a completely paradoxical thing. That's that's not what happens. It's you're thriving. You go on the stock exchange. So there's there is always like a PR spin of yes, we raise money or yes, we acquired this company, but at times it isn't that. So that that's my sort of when I whenever I hear that stuff, I'm personally interested in is it that or is it not? I don't know. And and piecing that together. But what, what is it for you? It's 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 a combination of both. I you know, one of my hobbies since I was very young is investing. Um so I do a lot of investing myself. So for me it's um you know, I don't really I, to be honest, I work in tech, I don't invest I work in sales engagement, but I don't really invest in that kind of sector. Um, I invest in tech, but I only go with, you know, the top 40. So I like to see what, what people are doing, um, why they're doing it, the raising money thing, you know, what are the reasons why they're raising money? Cause you know, being an entrepreneur, having a few companies, you know, potentially down the road, having another company, um, you know, I always like to see like, why do people do it? Like, why are you raising a hundred million when you're only doing 5 million in revenue? What's like, what's your reasoning? Unless you're doing something that's going to cost you millions, and millions of dollars of development. I don't see a reason to. Um, but it's for, I would say, both personal um, and industry. Like, I, I want to know, you know, you know, we're at Vanilla Soft, but why is Sales Loft and Woodpecker and Apollo and Outreach and all these other companies raising money? Like, why? We haven't. We're successful and growing, but, you know, you like to see. And then what you see is you see they raise money now, and then six months bef- you know, later, you're going to see them lay off people. It's just a, a vicious cycle. Um, but yeah, it's for both personal and uh, and obviously for for work. Yeah, I'd imagine you could say if one of our target accounts had a competitor raise a load of money, you could say, "Hey, company, like competitor raise money. What's your plan? But not what's your plan in terms of where you raise money, but they might dominate you now. Maybe you want to react to that. Like maybe we can help you with that. Is is the sort of angle? I guess yeah. you can do that." If you keep tabs on it, which is another thing, rather than just did they themselves keep tabs, uh, keep tabs, did they raise money, did they something, but did their market have a big impact, I think? Yep. No, I agree. Yeah, uh, this is, uh, well, first off, it was a great episode, interesting episode, different episode, but I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, It's been a, a nice episode, a different episode, like I mentioned. And also thank you for everybody listening, uh, wherever you are around the world. If you did enjoy the show, um, please don't ever forget to give us a five-star review wherever you're listening from. If you know any guests you want to bring on the show, you know, add Ollie or myself to LinkedIn. Let us know any guests you'd like to come. Or if you'd like to come on the show, send us a DM. Uh, We always qualify people that want to come on the show. Um, But once again, thank you so much and see you next week.